Hey viewers, and welcome to the 30th millennium, to the Unification Wars mod for Hearts of Iron 4. Today we are going to fight for the destiny of mankind so that man may become what it was always meant to be. Of course, led by the one figure with the power, with the will to unite us. So to do this, we play as the master of the lines, the leader of the Imperium. He has no name, he's a mysterious figure, and he's not quite what he seems. So yes, things will start out here in the Himalayan mountains, surrounded by a lot of other lesser kingdoms. And I hope you guys enjoyed the last week of consistent daily uploads for once. Luckily though, I'm not going back to my old schedule of only about two videos a week. I'll be trying to upload four videos every week, uploading on Sunday, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, at least in the US. It might be the day after that. And I won't be uploading any more Minecraft stuff here, but if you liked that first video I made, I've already uploaded a second video in that series to this other channel here, which I guess I'll throw a link to. If if you're interested in the Minecraft. But anyways, it's been fun. I'll be back on Sunday, so it's not like I'm going on a break, really. But anyways, mankind used to have a giant interstellar Dolores level empire, but that uh, fell apart. So now we're back on Earth, and that's why this time period in particular is the best for a uh, Hearts of Iron 4 mod. You can kind of recognize the continents, but things have changed quite a bit. A lot of it because of unnatural means. Because really, of course, in the long scheme of things, 27,000 years isn't going to change Earth that much just by normal plate tectonics. But interesting things have happened. There's a lot of land everywhere. You can still see the outlines of the old continents if you squint hard enough. There's some other great empires like the Pan Pacific Empire. You can kind of see China's coast, but China doesn't even border an ocean and anymore. That's how far things have gone. I wouldn't really even say there are oceans. If you really look closely, there's just lakes every here and there. It's honestly sad how things have degraded. It seems like someone might need to fix this mess of a world to put things back together. So as of right now, we'll be producing some caseless automatic firearms and primitive robotic heavy armor. And of course, don't let the primitive heavy armor confuse you. This is primitive from the perspective of people in 29790. So mankind has suffered 5,000 years of this, but the time has come for some change. Almost every single nation on earth, including all of them surrounding us are autocracies or tribes all fighting each other because they're mainly all warlord states. It's really nothing of worth anywhere besides us here and our distinct ideology guided by the imperial truth. We've recruited the help of a good partner in, I would say crime, but a partner in fulfilling the destiny of mankind. Of course, our capital is the fortress of the Sigilla. And its name is in yellow to show how perfect it is, unlike all the other capitals and cities. And unfortunately now we are unable to import very much plasteel. We can only get three. And so it begins. We get some resources, some more victory points, I guess. We're starting to build things up, push things into production. To the north of us lies the Dragon Kingdom, so it's time for our leader, the humble master of the lines, to convince them that he he is their dragon. And now we move to the west, to the Eagleborn. It is now time that we convince them that our master of the lines is their eagle, the one they seek. And now these dragon warriors serve their dragon with pride. We're gonna quickly build up the railroad. And now he has been accepted as the eagle. The eagle warriors now serve him too. We will add them to the dragon warriors. And now we have a strong force from nothing to at least something. But we haven't quite contacted our main force just yet. And we now have an amazing skill
kill a seven general. He'll do a good job, I'm sure. And now we can choose domination or an ultimatum to everybody. I don't know why we would do the domination one. It seems like the ultimatum is the way to go. We're going to encircle a couple divisions here. We'll encircle this division here. We'll start attacking into here and encircle this division here. The AI has quite a few divisions, but when they're understandably mismanaged, stuff like this is prone to happen. We haven't quite yet completed the first unification, but we're almost there. And we did it, the first unification, but we're being attacked. We at least have the cores. Well, they are cores, it just hasn't popped up yet. But regardless, this conflict is a nice time to reveal ourselves. The master of the lines is now no longer known as just the master of the lines. It's quite a more significant title. Yeah, that's maybe the highest title you could really go for there. And we have 24 new divisions that we will send right to the front. So our equipment situation is actually terrible, but we have been seizing the railroads. I don't think they own a single railroad or supply hub, which is not good for them. We're just refitting this last railroad with the right rails so our trains can go on it. We're trying to get the last few victory points too so they'll capitulate. I don't know though, we might have to take every single tile to get them to surrender, which will be annoying. But they're so weak and out of supply here in the west that we should be able to encircle giant groups of them, even with negative 142,000 infantry equipment. Now look at those guys in the mountains with actually zero supply. This is why you need trains, even in the year 29,792. My one hope, okay, is that once we capitulate them, we get a lot of their weapons and then can refill our stockpiles and continue to function. They're done, I guess we will take everything. Uh, we didn't get the weapons stockpile we wanted though, and now we are going to have to occupy them. I'll make sure to click this button here to put garrisons on high priority so they get weapons before the soldiers get weapons and we'll now send all of our operatives to reduce resistance because in the unification wars mod there is a coring mechanic so if we get compliance high enough then we can get all this as cores and then finally refill our manpower stocks i'm going to disband some of the dragon and eagle warrior guys though we just don't have equipment. Thunder warriors and stuff are our main divisions anyway, our proper legions. So despite being a victory, that war in the north wasn't very good in a lot of ways. We have no manpower, no equipment, we're occupying a large area that has a lot of unrest. So we're going to try to negotiate a peaceful unification with Pallas. We'll just be honest to bring order to this broken earth. Okay, well that was nice. I guess, um, do we need to get cores on it though? That's, that's a problem. If we don't automatically get cores, this is gonna be an issue. Yeah, because now we have to occupy them too. Hmm, it's very bad. At least we have some decisions to spread the Imperial Truth. I think the most important place that we should have spread the Imperial Truth to first is this northern area up here. And the Pan Pacific Empire wants us to become their vassal. That's a very funny request. <laughs> you know. And we've been declared on in the south, and occupying this place is just impossible. I, I don't know what to do. We just can't occupy all these places. I, I might just need to release this northern area as a puppet. I really don't want to do that, but it's gonna come down to it. And so far in this war, we've had 32 casualties. They've had almost a million. I think I'm just gonna stand here. I'll just let them attack into me with their hordes while I do absolutely nothing. And I have zero manpower because I'm actually 2 million manpower short on what I need for garrisons. I'm not even kidding. We have 370 8,000 deployed manpower. They have three to six million deployed manpower. Our capital isn't actually that populated. Like every single one of these states we're trying to occupy has 10 times the manpower of our capital. I was actually being a bit stupid and I had a terrible occupation division. I was using this hive rabble unit, which consumes 250,000 manpower per division. So it's a terrible division that you should never use. I don't know why I was using that for my garrisons. Uh, 
I was being very stupid there. Uh, but it's kind of cool though in theory to have a really bad division that just takes a lot of manpower for people who don't have factories. Maybe that's why this guy has so many divisions deployed just because he has all of his divisions as that unit. So I have joined myself a faction but only because they have a war goal against me and I don't really want to fight them right now. I think we could beat them but I, I don't want to. Ooh, we're occupying so many places and we're not even close to having enough compliance anywhere to start integrating anybody. And the Pan Pacific Empire has a war goal against us and everybody else. So it'll be nice to have some extra protection against them. Yeah, right now resistance is at least going down everywhere except this newly conquered territory. But now we have a real suppression division. I think I want to replace that suppression division with armored cars though. I think that'll be better because right now equipment is in our problem. So we can afford to invest in armored cars, which cost more to make, but use less manpower. And this army here, the Thunder Warriors, they're doing a great job. They've been instrumental in getting us this far and the divisions are kind of decent, I guess. But they're causing us some stability issues, so uh, goodbye. Now our army is very small, but I'm going to recruit these better divisions with 300 soft attack in like four or five times the heart attack of those guys. They don't have quite the same amount of HP, but man, that's fine. And we're finally going to core a heavily populated state. Coring this one state will give us a lot of manpower, though it takes an entire year to core it, so it'll be a while. This state is the state I really want to core though, but we're still 15% compliance short, but there's 75 million people in this one state. I think that's more than our entire population of cored states right now. Right now, our capital has less than a million people and we have 15 or so cord states and this is our most populated cord state and then we can core this state here soon with 70 million people. And since we have so much compliance, I should note that we are getting manpower from all these non-core states anyways. But once we core them, that'll make a large difference. Also, I feel like it's very important that we do the exterminatus research, so we will work towards that. I, I feel like that's vital to our interests here as the Imperium that we get that researched as soon as possible and get this program finished. It's gonna take a while though. I guess 50 more months isn't too long. We're also building the Titan, which will be uh, fun. And we've finally done it. We've unlocked actual space marines, not just those cheating divisions that people call space marines are really good divisions in EU4 that people call space marines. No, see these are real space marines. Yeah, that's a lot of organization and HP and decent soft and hard attack for this mod and a lot of defense. Yeah, these are good divisions, I would say. Anyways, that's all for today.